Hallelujah, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. Come on, somebody just magnify his name with me on this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we lift our voice right now to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we love you this morning, God. We adore you this morning, God. We magnify your holy name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we just want to take a few moments, God, to tell you how awesome you are, God. Hallelujah. We want to tell you, take a few moments to tell you how worthy you are, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, there is nobody like you, God. Come on, I wish we would open our mouths all over this building and just, just give him the praise that he's due. Just love on him for just a few moments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us may have had a rough week, but this is our time just to, uh, to love on the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for being so good to us, God. Thank you, God, for being so awesome to us, God. Thank you, God, for keeping us, God. Thank you for protecting us, God. Thank you for holding us, God. Lord, when we didn't know which way to turn, God, when we didn't know which way to look, God, when, when nobody would answer the phone, God, you were there, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. When we thought we were at our breaking point, God, you kept us, God. Lord, you held us in your hand, God. Hallelujah. Lord, God, we just say you thank you on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, we honor you. We honor your spirit, oh God, in this house on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You are so worthy, God. You are so worthy, God. You are so worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, God, you are worthy, God. You are worthy. God, you are worthy. Hallelujah. 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 You are worthy, God. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God, we just want to tell you, thank you, God, for being so good to us, God. Lord, for the many doors that you've opened, God, the many ways that you've made, God, hallelujah. God, there is none like you, God, hallelujah. Yes, God. You are worthy, God, you are worthy.
know he has for me time and time again. Hallelujah. When I was tossing and turning Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. 
We give you praise. We give you glory. All that you've done for us and who you are to us, Lord, we appreciate you. We're grateful, Lord, you woke us up this morning. You breathed the breath of life in us, Lord. You gave us a mind to come into the house again to worship you. You gave us a mind to come into the house and learn. And Father, we're grateful. Lord, we're grateful that you didn't, Lord, allow, allow us to die in that sin. But you brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And Father, for that we're grateful people. We pray in Jesus' name that you would bless this service today. That your spirit would have a free course in this house. That your word and songs of Zion, Lord, would be to the glory and honor of your name. Bless everyone, Lord, under the sound of my voice. Bless them. May we all have an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. Manifest signs and wonders. Manifest miracles and blessings. Break chains and yokes, Lord. Loose the bands in this house. And those that are watching, Lord, on social media. Bless them and deliver. Lord, heal by your power divine. And we'll give you the glory and praise. Come on, somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Lord, you are everything. Lord, you are everything. Lord, you are everything. You are everything. But we can do nothing without you. We can do nothing without you. We come to worship you. Breathe in here. Breathe, Lord. Breathe refreshing. Breathe refreshing, Lord. Release joy unspeakable and full of glory, 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 glory. Come on, somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. We've applauded people all week long. We've appreciated people all week long. We've given pats on the back. We've given hugs and thanks. But what about God and His goodness? What about God and His faithfulness? He's given us breath. He's given us life. Amen. And He's worthy. I said He's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. I'm grateful. Anybody else grateful? Anybody else grateful? I'm grateful, grateful, grateful for all the things he's done. I'm grateful for all the things he's done. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. He reached way down and picked me up. He reached way down and delivered me. He reached way down and looked upon me. He reached way down and moved upon my life. I'm grateful today. I wish I had somebody else that was grateful. I wish I had somebody else that had tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Hey, blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. He reached way down when I was in the valley. He reached way down when I was in the club. He reached way down when I was in the court system. He reached way down when I was in jail. He reached way down. Have God ever reached way down? Have he ever had to come against you? Yeah, Lord. Have he ever came and got you? When you couldn't see a way out. When you didn't know how it was going to happen. But his goodness. Somebody said, when I think of the goodness in Jesus. And all that he's done. 
Hey, I wish I had a church that praised the Lord. I wish I had a church that glorified. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, the writer said, my soul cries out. Hey, Lord, hallelujah. I thank God that he saved me. I thank God that he delivered me. Sit 
situation and go to the name. Leave that challenge and go to the name. There's power. There's power. Whisper to somebody and tell them there's power in the name. Whisper to somebody and tell them there's power in the name. Whisper to them. That enemy's been whispering to you. Fear has been whispering to you. Depression has been whispering to you. Anxiety has been whispering to you. But I'm whispering the name of Jesus. Jesus in your ear gates. Jesus in your ear gates. Jesus in your soul. Jesus be glorified. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When you don't know all the scriptures, when you don't know all the words to say, I just say Jesus. When I can't see no way out, when the pain is hurting too bad, I just call when I don't know what to do. I just call on. I just call on Jesus. I've seen him as a helper. I've seen him as a provider. I've seen him as a way maker. I've seen him as a healer. I've seen him as a deliverer. Hela, glory to God. I've seen him as a bright and morning star. Hey, glory to God. I've seen him as peace that surpasses all understanding. I don't know how you've seen him, but I've seen him as a way maker. Anybody seen Jesus as a way maker? Anybody seen Jesus as a burden bearer? Anybody seen Jesus as a heart fixer? I know he is. I know he is. I don't have to shout on other people's testimony. I don't have to give God praise on other people's testimony. I know what he's did for me. I know what he's done for me. That's how faithful he is. When you think on the Lord's praise, it's his praise. It's his praise. It's his praise. It's his praise. I believe something is going to break in here today. It's his praise. When we give it to the Lord and we come into his house and worship him, he teaches us. When we come into his house and praise him, he teaches us. But we have to come in the right atmosphere. The right mindset and heart. The Lord, I need this. I need you to teach me. I come, Lord, for you. I come to you. I come for you. Didn't come for anybody else. I come to the house of God for you. I come to the house of God to give you the glory, Lord. Because you've been that faithful to me. It's beautiful when you see the older people in their old age, how peace has sat upon them. That walk with God, that talk with God, they had fellowship, intimate fellowship with God, with peace sit upon them. God began to be beautiful in their lives. But we don't have to wait to be old for God to be beautiful in our lives. We don't have to be weighed down with trials for God to be beautiful in our lives. When we decide to surrender to God, to really submit to Him and not fight against Him, give our heart and our soul to the Lord. He can be glorified. Beloved, today is going to be a beautiful day of worship. Today is going to be a beautiful day of praise to our God. We thank God for you joining us. We're going to go further. 
We thank God for our social media audience joining us too. But this is what we do here at ICM. It's not about a form, not a fashion, nor show. It's not about what you wear. It's not about that. But it's about us coming together collectively for God to be glorified, for the name of Jesus to be exalted in us. Praise team, come and lead us in praise and worship to our great God. Praise team, come and lead us in praise and worship to our God. Is he your God? Is he your God? Is he your God? Call is he your God? Huh? Reverend, is he your God? Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Does anybody know him to be your everything? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, you are our everything, God. Hallelujah, Lord, you are master, God. You are ruler, God. You are redeemer, God. You are provider, God. You are shelter, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy, God. You are worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Everything, everything, you're everything to me, everything, 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 you're everything to me, you're everything, joy and sorrow.
be mine, it shall be mine, it shall be mine, it shall be mine, it shall be mine. If I hold my Jesus, it shall be mine, it shall be mine, it shall be mine. All the joy, it shall be mine, all the peace, it shall be mine. It shall be mine, it shall be mine, if I hold my peace, if I hold my peace, it shall be mine, it shall be mine, it shall be mine, victory shall be mine. Sometimes you got to say it. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. No more defeat. Come on, somebody wipe away defeat out of your life. Come on, somebody wipe away failure out of your life. Come on, I wish somebody would wipe it away from your mind, from your thoughts. No more residue of faith. No more residue of defeat. Victory is mine. I say victory is mine. Victory on every side of my life. Victory in my mind. Victory in my thoughts. Victory in my mind. Victory in my dreams. Victory in my vision. Victory in my children. Victory in my grandchildren. Victory in my community. Victory on my street. Victory in my state. Victory in my city. Anybody have the victory? Come on, shout victory. Come on, shout victory. Declare victory, beloved. Declare victory. Victory, victory, victory. Victory, victory. Victory. When you live victorious, ain't no complaining. Because you know it's victory. No procrastinating. When you know it's victory. Yes, Lord. Victory. Thank you, Jesus. It's offering time. It's offering time. Time where we worship the Lord in our giving. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Time where we worship the Lord in our giving. And we're still living in victory. Anybody have victory over your finances? Anybody declare victory over death? Huh? 
Anybody have big girl with your finances? You can't patty cake that. You can't patty cake that. You can't pay. You got to believe that. Anybody have victory over your finances? Victory over debt? Victory? The Lord says a man purpose in his heart, so let him give. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. Out of the heart. Out of the heart flows the issues of life see we don't just say stuff just to say it we say it until you believe it because out of the heart flows the issues what's in your heart is what you're going to see what's in your heart is what you're going to believe what's in your heart is what you're going to live that's why heart has to be changed to believe God's word. To begin to live God's word. And see this is what God anticipates for his children. For his children to develop a, a level of faith and maturity. To believe him. To trust him with everything. I don't present my type because the man of God say it. I present it because it's in the word. And I know that God provides for me. I don't give my offering because the man of God requested it. I give it because the Lord told us it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. That's why I do it. And see, that's why the believers have to allow our mindsets to change. Many of us was born into curses of lack, curses of debt, curses of poverty. And we begin to talk like that. We begin to live our life with $5. We give God $5 because that's how much we view God. But I always prayed and asked God to help me increase my giving. And in doing that, God always provided more. And First Lady and I always have been generous people. Not just into the church, but about life. Because stingy people, they keep their hands tight. They keep their mouth tight. And they'll lock up and live on what they have. And it won't even allow God to provide for them. Won't even allow God to supply all their need according to his riches and glory. They won't even give God access because they're so stingy. Learn to be a generous people, beloved. Whatever we believe, that's what we become. Believe that God provides for you. Believe that God gives you the discipline and self-control to pay your bills and pay your obligations. Don't steal from creditors. Pay your obligations. Live an honest life. Pay your obligations. If you did it, pay your obligations and live an honest life where God can be pleased. The way we think is the way we live. Our future is not in anyone else's hands. You keep it in God's. You keep it in God's. Let me read Jeremiah just one passage. Jeremiah 1 and 10 in the New and Living Translation. Somebody shout increase. Jeremiah 1 and 10. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. See, that's where it's time for us to stand up, beloved. And we have to stand up even to our financial issues. To where we don't, don't manage them in fear. Even when God said, let there be light, he put his attention and focus on that thing. 
And it became what he said. And when you put your attention and focus on your, even your debts, let that be light. You put your attention and a focus on it. That thing could change. It has to. You're too powerful not for it to change. Even your credit score, all that stuff. You put your attention and focus on it. It has to change when you put effort in that thing. That's how powerful God created us to be. But when you don't put your attention and focus on your debt, your finances, on your credit, that thing begins to, you begin to be a slave to it. You begin to be a slave to it to your money. You begin to be a slave to your finances. You begin to be a slave to your credit instead of you being victorious. And even the same voice that God said, let that be light, that same power and authority he's given us as the children of God. But it requires us to put our our focus on it. Whatever you put your attention on, that thing changes. It brings light. That's why God said, let there be light when there was nothing, when there was chaos. Put your focus on that thing. And the Holy Spirit, he gives us one of his fruits is self-control. He gives us the self-control to live a disciplined life. Whatever you believe, that's what you live. If you believe that you can come out of debt, you'll live it. But if you don't believe and you believe that you're going to be a slave to this debt for all these years, you'll be a slave to it. But if you believe God can help you, God will give you a strategy. He'll give you resources. He'll put people in your life that'll help you get out of that financial debt. Why? Because the day I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some of you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others, others you must build up and plant. There's work for us to do. And we don't have time to be a slave to debt. We don't have, we don't have time to be a slave to bad credit and all that stuff, to the systems of this world. We don't have time to be a slave to and think that the government provides for us. The government isn't our source. It's God that takes care of us. The job isn't your source. It's God that takes care of you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody believe what I'm talking about? It's God that provides for you. It's not that check you get. It's God that gives you. It's God, Miller. He's given us power to obtain the things that we need to get done. But we have to live in it. It is God's will that we increase. As you prepare your tithe and as we prepare our giving. We offer a few different ways to sow our seed today. We have text to give. That number is 1-844-468. 3549. You can follow the secured prompts and uh and, and sow your seed and present your tithe to the Lord. These methods are on the screen behind me and they're also on our social media. We also have our cash app, and that's dollar sign IC Ministries Tampa. That's dollar sign IC Ministries Tampa. Our greed is gonna come and serve those in the house of God. And we thank God for your giving. Beloved, we're still doing a work in India. We're still doing a work. If you're interested in slow, uh, sowing in our global missions calls, please sow into that effort and put in the comments global missions. Amen. We love you.
Jesus. Everyone standing, extend your hands to, amen, to your seeds and to your time. This is your life. Speak to your life, beloved. This is the beginning of your life. Somebody tell it to increase. Command it to increase. He's given us power to be priests and kings. He's given us kings and kings decree a thing and it shall be established. We decree increase upon every tithe and upon every offering. Let it bring forth a harvest and return back unto your children even 100 fold. This we stand by the power and authority of your word. When the kingdom of God be at our hands, that the, oh God, the windows of heaven, oh God, blessings will be upon us. This we ask and declare and believe in Jesus' name. Somebody give God some praise. Shout increase in him. Come on, shout increase. Praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God for each of you joining us this morning for our IC Ministries worship experience. And we pray that you have been blessed thus far. Please listen carefully for all of our IC updates and announcements. We invite everyone to join us every morning, Monday through Friday, for our daily morning devotion. Let's start our day seeking the mind of Christ. Let's make our plans align with his plans for our day. Psalm 63 and 1 says, O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Calling all of the men to join us on this coming Tuesday, August 13th at 7 p.m. on Zoom for our IC Warriors ministry meeting. This is an opportunity for our men to get together and to study God's word. We also invite everyone to join us every Wednesday in person here at the church or on Zoom at 7 p.m. for our midweek Bible study. Again, this begins at 7 p.m. online or in person here at the church. So please join us and be blessed. On Thursdays of each week, we invite all of our youth to join us for our Kids Zone Bible Study. This is an opportunity for our youth to fellowship together and to increase their knowledge of God and the Bible. So if there are any youth or any children, grandchildren, nieces, or nephews that do not have the link, please feel free to share it with them. Philippians 4 and 6 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. So join us every Saturday at 9 a.m. as we make our petitions known to God and thank him in advance for everything that he will do. We want to take this time to tell everyone thank you, thank you, thank you for all who came out and or supported our marriage maintenance seminar in Lakeland, Florida. Amen, amen. So if you missed it this year, we pray that you will catch us next year around this same time. Amen, amen. We want to invite all of our women and just remind them about our Women's Prayer Brunch on Saturday, this Saturday coming, August 17th at 11 a.m. That will be right here at IC Ministries Tampa. We will have some phenomenal speakers and tickets are only $20 if you get them before Saturday, $20 early bird special and 25 at the door. Please invite your co-workers, your cousins, your friends. We want to be a blessing to our community. So again, this Women's Prayer Brunch, August 17th at 11 a.m. right here at IC Ministries Tampa. On August 24th, we want to remind everyone about our indoor flea and fresh market. August 24th, 
from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, this will be held in Lakeland, Florida at the Apostle Henry Ross Family Life Center. The address is 1302 Martin Luther King Jr. Ave, Lakeland, Florida. Please come out. And as Pastor mentioned, anyone who wants to contribute to our Global Reach Initiative, please feel free to do so. We have two churches over in India, one led by Pastor Suresh and one led by Pastor Sunil. And we want to continue to be a blessing to IC Ministries India. So if you just want to be a blessing or if you want to send books for the children or crayons or any type of resources, please get with Pastor or First Lady so that we can coordinate that effort. Amen? Amen. Lastly, if you'd like to receive all of our IC updates or announcements, or if your contact information has changed, please fill out one of our Connect cards so that your information can be updated in our system. These are announcements. Be blessed. Gave it 
and dementia. Thank you, Lord, for victory, Lord. Oh, God, and Father, those that have been afflicted, Lord, by the enemy, we declare victory over them, Lord. Over cancer, Lord, we declare victory. Lord, over everyone that asks us to pray for them, we declare victory for them. As we stand in the gap, Lord, and make up the hedge, we declare victory, Lord. Oh, God, victory of healing, victory of deliverance, victory of salvation. Lord, we thank you in advance, Lord, for victory, Lord, over that body that's been racking in pain. Victory over that family that's going through bereavement. Victory, Lord, on every side. Victory in our government. Victory, Lord, in our military. Victory, Lord, in our first responders. Victory in the body of Christ. Lord, we declare victory in this house today. As your word is ministered, we declare victory, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Somebody give God some praise. Victory. Victory. That was 
ask somebody a question today. You came in here with a question, not knowing. And you on social media, you're not knowing. I dare you come in victory. I dare you come in victory. From Isaiah 2. And we thank God for his presence with us today. We give God praise. We thank God for his presence. Thank God for our first lady. We give God praise for her. We give God praise for her. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, thank God for your first lady. Amen, amen. She don't like for us to, be, to call her first lady. Yes, Lord. But it's her seat. It's her seat. That God gave her. Amen. And we appreciate her. We appreciate the, the ministers. And we appreciate the mothers. Appreciate the musicians. And we appreciate all the men and women of God in here today. Come on and find somebody and tell them I appreciate you. Come on, tell them I appreciate you. DJ, I appreciate you. 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 I appreciate you, Reverend. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you. Amen. We should get used to that. And we should never be unfamiliar with that, appreciating each other. We should never be lost to that, appreciating each other. Isaiah 2, verses 2 and 3. And the New International Version. Isaiah 2, verses 2 and 3, and the New International Version. This was a, a, a prophecy and a message that Isaiah preached. That he saw something way back then. The Lord showed him. The day that we're living in now. And this is so crucial for us to understand this. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Yes. Isaiah 2, 2, 3, uh, excuse me, 2 through 3 in the New International Version. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the heights of the mountains. Let me read that one more time. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. As the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills it will be exalted above the hills and all nations will stream to it all nations will stream to it many peoples will come and say what come, come. let us go up to where to the mountain of what? The Lord. the Lord. To what? To the temple of who? Of God of Jacob. He would do what when we go up to the mountain? Huh? When we go up to the mountain, what would happen? He will teach us his ways. He will teach us his ways when we go up to the mountain so that we may Walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion. The word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. I've been chewing on this. On this prophecy and this sermon from Isaiah. And last week we begin to talk about the mountain top faith and we we're going to stick with that for today 
Mountain Top Faith Part 2. And I know I, uh, Kathy told me last week that I said that I was going to stay down and not uh, get too excited. And she reminded me how quickly I got excited. So I, I'm not going to say I'm not going to do it. But we have several passages we want to teach to today. And bring up some things where it's crucial in these last days. The mountain of the Lord's temple will be established. Now the mountain of the Lord, it represents the kingdom of God and the church. The mountain of the Lord. And in his presence, the prophecy that Isaiah was declaring was a time the church and God's kingdom would be realized as supreme and exalted above all powers and authorities. This is what Isaiah had begun to see way back then in the last days. The mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains and it will be exalted above the hills. This prophecy was a was it's a futuristic prophecy that Isaiah was saying that all nations was coming together to worship God. All nations, all cultures, all ethnic groups, all this thing. And there would be a time where there would be global peace and unity. What Isaiah had begun to see. That the churches would come together collectively. The people of God, the people would come from far near and assemble together to the Lord's mountain. And right there at that place, God would begin to teach them. But it's amazing how people have stopped coming to the mountain yeah. to be taught. Yeah. They say and think in their mind they can be taught at home. They think in their mind they can be taught at work. But the Bible said right here when you go to the mountain, there he'll teach us. At the mountain when we go there, he'll begin to teach us. And see, God is anticipating his children to represent his glory. Ultimately, our life, all of our being, our life existence. God is expecting us to represent the fullness of his glory. Regardless of what and how you live the first part of your life, the middle part, or right where you at, or the future, it all is going to end up representing God's glory. All of it. And see, that's why we now have to think about what's God's goal for you? What is God's goal for you? What is God anticipating for you? Yeah. How close are you to walking in that? <laughs> that one first lady that time. That one. <laughs> but how in tune are you with God's glory? How in tune with, are you with God's plan for your life? Look at Ephesians 2. I know you was about to get up, Reverend. Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. Because today I want to show us something. Where well, I begin to realize how we act in the last days. Because this is a last day prophecy for the entire church. This is God talking about the end time church. And God is concerned about the end time church and her placement. What is she doing? Is the end time church in the place where she's supposed to be at? Is she doing what she's supposed to be doing? Is the end time church engaged like how I anticipate her to be? God is concerned about the end time church. And all of us are part of this prophecy that Isaiah had saw. And all of us are part of God's expectation for the end time church. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. We all, Ephesians 2, 
4 through uh, 10. And let me read that in the New and Living Translation. But God is so, what? Rich in what? Huh? So rich in mercy. Come on and act like y'all with me in Bible class. For God is so rich in mercy. And what? He loves us what? So much. So, huh? He loves us what? So much. so much. He loves us so much. Come on, ladies. You know how you want that man to say when they say so much. I love you so much. That's how God loves us so much. He loves us so much. Feel first. That even though what? Even though we were dead because of what? Our sins. He what? He gave us what? Life when what? He raised Christ from the dead. It is, uh, it is only by what? God's grace that, that you have been saved. It's not your grace. It's not because of mama. It's not because of daddy. It's not because our last name and who we associated with. They can't save us. They can't deliver us. They can't put us in heaven. They can't put us in hell. But it's by God's grace that we're saved. For he raised us from what? He raised us from the dead. Along with what? Christ. With Christ and did what? Seated and seated us. us. As God raised Christ from the dead, he raised you from the dead. Yeah. He raised me from the dead. He raised that bad boy from the dead. Yeah. He raised that bad niece from the dead. That bad nephew from the dead. Right when he raised Christ from the dead, he yeah. began to raise the drunkard. He began to raise the drug addict. He be began to raise the fornicator, the liar, the adulterer, the thief. Right when he raised Christ from the dead. He raised us all. He raised us from the dead along with Christ. And then what? Seated us with him. And what? In heavenly realms because he, because we are united. united with Christ. Jesus. Yes, Lord. So God can point to us in all future ages. What? As examples of the incredible wealth of his Grace and what? Kindness, Kindness who? Towards. Towards us. As shown in all he has, he has done for who? Us. For us who are united, united with Christ. Christ Jesus. Anybody allowed themselves to be raised by Christ? Yes, Lord. We've been raised with Christ. He set us in heavenly realms. And now we're united with Christ Jesus. Our life should look like that. The way that we talk should look like that. The way that we live should look like that. God saved us what? God saved you by his grace. When what? When you believe this. We have to believe that we've been raised up from the dead. We have to, be, we have to believe that we've been raised up from the deadness of our sins and our faults and our shamefulness and our guilt and our condemnation. We have to believe that you're saved by his grace when you believe. Anybody in here believe? And he said, now what? And you can't do what? You can't tell what? You, take, you can't take credit for this. This is what? This is a gift from God. You can't take credit for this. Not your salvation. Not your neighbor's salvation. Not your children, your grandchildren, your community, no nations. You, take, you cannot take credit for this. This is a gift from God. He says salvation is not a reward for Huh? For the good things we have done, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. See, some of us are trying to stop doing this and stop doing that and then call ourselves coming to the Lord. 
No, that's not salvation. Salvation is when God raised you up from the deadness of your sin. You can't come out of that stuff in your own strength. You can't stop doing that in your own strength. It has to be by the grace of God that raised you up, that delivers you. If you do it, you'll go back to it. But if God do it, he'll bring you out. Anybody seen God bring somebody out? Or have he brought you out? Yes, Lord, he do it so so we don't get any credit. And we don't get any credit for it. Yes, Lord. So we don't boast in it. The 10th verse says we are God's masterpiece. He has what? Created us what? A new in who? Christ Jesus. So we can what? Do the things what? He planned for us. Long ago, this is God's anticipation for us to be, for Him to be glorified in us. So this is the message that we declare to the world. This is the message. But see, people are living by whatever profit them right now. They're living by whatever profit them right now. That's what gets their attention. Whatever they profit from right now, that's what they believe in. Whatever's profiting them right now, that is the Lord. Whatever's profiting them right now, that's their God. But there's a time now, Isaiah saw it, that there's going to be a global awakening. Yeah. And that's what Isaiah was talking about that was coming. A global awakening, a revival that was coming for the church. That's what Isaiah was saying and declaring. That people was going to come from everywhere. People was going to come from everywhere. And that global awakening, beloved, is coming. And even the, the, the writing Psalms 24, 3 through 4 talked about this. That who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in this holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. See, there's a global awakening that's coming. There's a revival that is coming. Look at Daniel two and four and forty-four. Yes, Lord, there's a there's a, a, a revival that is coming, beloved. You believe that? Yes, Lord, have you been praying for your children to be caught in that revival? Have you been praying for your community to be caught up in that revival? Yes, Lord, the church to be caught up in that revival. During the rains, Daniel 2 and 44. I'll read this in the New and Living also. During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will what? Will set up a kingdom. That will what? Would never be destroyed or what? The con or be conquered. The church would never be destroyed or conquered. Regardless of how it may look, the things that you may hear, the things that you may believe. But the word said that God will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. And what would happen? It will crush what? All these kingdoms into what? Into nothingness. Yes, have you ever seen nothingness? That's what God is going to do as he raised the church up. Yes, Lord. And he said these kingdoms would be brought down to nothingness and it will stand forever. Yes, Lord, that's God's kingdom. That's God's church. And see that the end time church is being built. The end time church is being delivered. The end time church is growing in stature and in power. We might think that it's depleting, but nothing by God depletes. Nothing by God's vision depletes. But God's end time church is going to grow in stature and in power. Regardless of how you, the scandals you might hear, the people that rise and fall, that has God's church still is going to grow. God's church still would never be destroyed. God's church still is going to prosper. Yes, 
Yes, Lord. God's church is still going to be productive. God's church still is going to produce. It's going to be productive and it's going to produce and it's going to produce God's power. I say God's church has to produce. It has to be productive and it's going to produce God's power. That's what God's church is going to move towards. That's the global awakening. That's the end days revival. And we are part of that, what Isaiah was talking about right now. Yes, Lord. The way we see, we become more productive than we ever were. We begin to be more fruitful than we ever were. That's what we was talking about in Bible study. The other word of productive, what Jesus said, if you abide in the vine. Yes, Lord. When you abide in the vine, you'll produce much fruit. This is where the church is going to, as long as the church abide in the vine, it's going to produce much fruit. Anybody abiding in the vine, anybody abiding in the vine, the church has to produce. I wish you find somebody and tell them it's time to produce and it's time to be productive. It's time to produce and it's time to be productive. Don't you know God's power is coming out? I say, don't you know God's power is being demonstrated? I say, don't you know God's power is being de demonstrated? He already said it. In the last day, he's going to do this stuff, beloved. He's going to bring the nations together. Yes, Lord, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And they're going to come into my house. And they're going to worship it. They're going to glorify me. And they're going to learn from it. That's why it's important to be into God's house. So you can learn. So you can grow. So God can talk to you. Anybody thank God that you in God's house? I say anybody thank God that you at the right place at the right time for a miracle. I say you at the right place at the right time to be a sign and a wonder. Anybody need the power of God? It's time, beloved, for the power of God to come. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And see, many people are going to admire the church. The world is going to admire the church. As the as church begin to work together, the church begin to communicate together, the church begin to do this together, they begin to do that together, they begin to get over their difficulties, they begin to get over their emotional uh, the uniqueness, and they begin to be committed to each other. Are there any community of believers in here? Anybody in church today? Anybody in the church today? See, the world is looking, and the, the world is going to want to be a part of it. The world is looking, and the church is coming up to the fullest power. I said, you hadn't seen the full power yet. I said, the momentum is coming. I said, the thrust is coming. The force of God is coming. And you need to be caught up in the force. You need to be caught up in the power. Look at Micah 4 and 1. Look at Micah 4 and 1. It's coming up in the fullest power. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be what? The highest is coming up. The mountain, and I'm reading from the New and Living Translation. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house, yeah, so it will be the highest of all. See, there's going to be a lot of houses being raised up. That the false prophets are raising up houses. The false prophecies are raising up houses. The lying apostles and the lying wonders, they're raising up houses. But God's house is going to be the highest of them all. Anybody thank God for God's house? Yes, Lord, will be the highest of them all. The most important place on the earth. That's God's church. I say that's God's church will be the most important place on the earth. It will work. I wish somebody would help me. It will work. I said, somebody help me. It will be raised what? Above the what? The other hills. Yes, I know you're looking at all the hills. You're, you're observing other hills. But don't get lost in the other hills. Keep looking to the hills. Because they look to the hills from which coming their help. And their help coming from God. You got to look at the right hill. 
Yes, Lord. Every hill is not a holy hill. Every hill is not a righteous hill. I'm talking about the holy hill. Anybody ready to go to the holy hill? Anybody committed to living in the holy hill? Yes, Lord. The most important place on earth, it will be raised above the other hills. And the people from where? Huh? You got to call them. I say you got to call them. The people from where? All over the world will stream there to what? To worship. Yes, Lord. See, this is where God wants us to be. But see, the church... Yes, Lord, the mountain shall be exalted. We got to prove to the world that they need Jesus. We got to say to the world that on the job you need Jesus. You got to show in your community that you need Jesus. You got to show in your children life that there is a need for Jesus. If the church doesn't show that there's a need for Jesus, why would the world come in? If the church doesn't show that they need Jesus, why would they come in? See, that's why we have to be careful. What we share about Jesus to the world. Yes, Lord. We got to be careful what we share about Jesus to the world. See, the kingdom of God is not just poor. The church isn't just for poor people. It's not just for rejected people. The church and the kingdom of God is not just for disgruntled and sick people. It's not just that. Look at Psalms 103. See, you got to know it yourself. You didn't just come just because you was going through issues. The kingdom of God is so much more than that. The church of God is so much more than, than angry people, bitter people, distracted people. Look at Psalms 103, verses 1 through 3. Let all that I am praise the Lord. And I'm reading from the New and Living Translation as well. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my what? My whole heart I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I what? Never, Never forget what? The good things he what? He does. There's some good things that he does for me. And what else does he do? He forgives what? Huh? He forgives your Sunday morning sins. He forgive your Friday night sins. He forgive your Saturday night sins. But he forgives what? All my sins. And what? Heals all my, all my disease. Isn't that a story to tell? Isn't that some benefits in this? This is what we have to present to the world. That God, he's a God who forgives. Yes, Lord. That's what we have to present to the world. He's a God that forgives. Don't you know when you needed somebody to forgive you, how the difference it made in your life? You didn't need somebody to preach to you. You didn't need somebody to scorn you. You didn't need somebody to suppress you. You needed somebody to forgive you. He's a God that forgives. That's what the world needs to know. That's what we have to show. Look at Daniel 9 and 9. Goodness. Lord have mercy. Did I say I was, I was going to stay down today? Yes, yeah, so on Daniel 9 and 9. See, Mark Anthony and Cleet, y'all do that to me. See, y'all need to leave me alone. Let me do this. Then Daniel 9 and 9. But the Lord our God is what? Merciful. Huh? Merciful. This is a message the world needs to know. The world needs to know. The world knows that it, it, it's wrong. They, they know, but they need to know this. But the Lord our God is what? Merciful, Merciful and what? Forgiving. He's forgiven even though we... Huh? Come on and act like it. Even though we have rebelled against him, he's still merciful. And he's what? He's forgiven. Anybody thank God that he's forgiven? Look at Ephesians 1 and 7. Yes, so he's merciful and he's forgiven. He's a forgiving God. He is so rich in what? In kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with 
the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He's a God who forgives. I wish somebody would say it. And chat that if you're on social media. He's a God that he forgives. He's a God who forgives. He, there is some hope, beloved. See, as we're living in a day that there's many people struggling with no hope. They, they don't see a way out. They, they don't see hope. They live with no hope. But we have to convey to the world, to the culture, that there's hope, beloved. We got to tell the world that God will forgive. We got to tell the world and stop looking down on them. Stop scorning them and tell them how much God will forgive them. Tell them how much stop just stop uh, stop being so hard with your critical with your word and begin to tell them that God will forgive them. I'm not telling you to condone the sin. I'm not telling you to look away from the sin. I'm telling you to tell them that God forgives of the sin. God God forgives of the bad habits. God forgives. Anybody, regardless of what you've done, you're welcome to come to God. I say regardless of what you've done, you, you're welcome to come. He's, look at Romans 3 and 23. Regardless of, get that from me, Romans 3 and 23, regardless of what you've done. See, we look at people through our eyes like we picked up the stone. And ready to lunch that stone. We've, we've lunch stones at our children. We've lunch stones at the community. We've lunch stones at the government. But Jesus told us what to do with that stone. Yes, Lord. We've been walking with stones long enough. And it's time for us to put the stones down and pick up mercy. It's time for us to put the stones down and pick up love. It's time for us to put the stones down and pick up the joy. It's time to forgive. I wish somebody say, tell God that I, that I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for forgiving me. Yes, Lord. For everyone has what? Has sin. Everyone. Every one of us has sin. We all have fallen short of the glory of God's glorious standard. We all have fallen short. Yes, Lord. See, it was love that kept Jesus on the cross for us. It was love. And I'm not telling you again to condone it, the sin. But see, the world will only come to, to God that forgives, not that condones. Many people condone the sin instead of forgiving. But we got to forgive and not condone it. Let me, let me share this last passage and we'll, we'll close. Luke 14. Yes, Lord, he's a God that forgives. Luke 14, 15 through 23. Let me look at this in the New International Version. Luke 14, 15 through 23. He's a God that forgives. Yes, Lord. When we just think about that, beloved. Yes, Lord, because the culture is looking. The world is looking. See, many of us, uh, we're doing free marketing for Satan on social media. We'll say how bad the church is in a minute. And then we want them to come to the church. But we'll tell them on social people that don't go to church. We'll say how much love, how the church needs love. But they don't even go to church. But we, why would they go to a church or be a part of something that we're advertising that's not there? We'll act like Jesus isn't interested in us. Or people that fight, we'll talk about internal stuff. Don't you get mad when your children talk about what goes on in your house? Huh? Don't you, how mad do you get when your children go outside of your house and begin to tell about the business, what's going on in your house? How angry do you get? And you begin to scorn. How do we accept or think God feels and Jesus feels when we're blaring on social media, all the negative stuff that's going on in the church? 
and in the same anticipation think that somebody want to be a part of it. Why would they want to be a part of a body that can't get along together? Why would they want to be a part of a group of people that hate each other? They blare this stuff all on social media. Give Satan free marketing. Free marketing. Free advertisement. That's why we have to be careful what we're posting on social media. We have to be careful what we're commenting and helping to go through. Somebody might do it out of ignorance. That don't mean we join in with that conversation. I want to see people brought into the streams, into the mountain of God. I want to see people come into the mountain of God. I don't want to draw people away or run them away. Come on and look at this. Luke 14, and this is what the same passage we use in Bible class. But we want to share something a little different. When one of those at the table, when, excuse me, when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent to his servant to tell those who had been uh, invited. Huh? Yes. What did he tell them? Come. To come for what? Everything, Everything is now ready. See, this is how the church status have to be. We have to be ready to receive the culture, the ones that's out there. The church have to be ready to receive and provide substance to them. We can't, it's no time to get ready. The church have to be ready. The body of Christ have to be prepared to be ready to receive the, the nations, the stream, the people that are coming that God is sending. He said, tell them to come. Everything is not ready. But they are, they all what? They all alike begin to what? To make excuses. Now, hold on. Let me, let me do a, uh, what do they call that thing? A disclosure, a disclosure. A disclaimer. I'm not preaching on you. I know a lot of you all get mad and think I'm being your business. But I really don't know anything about you. I'm just sharing and preaching the word. So don't get mad at me if the word convicts you. I'm not talking. I'm, I'm just reading the word. Amen. Huh? All right. So where was I at? 18. See, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Y'all following. Y'all good students. The first said, I have what? Just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please what? Excuse me. Another one. Somebody shout another set. Another set. I have just bought what? Five yokes of what? Oxen and I am what? On my way to what? To try them out. What? Please excuse me. Somebody shout another one. Yes, Lord. The 20th verse says still another set. Somebody shout another set. I just what? I just got married, so I can't I can't come. Somebody shout another one. The twenty verse for twenty first verse said the servant came back again and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house began became what? Angry and what? Ordered his servants to do what? To go out quickly into where the streets and. The alleys of the town and what? Bring what? In the poor, the crippled, and the, the blind and the lame. See, God, see, Jesus just let the ones that made it. Did he rebuke them? What he did? He just let them go. He let them do what they did. And he left them to go on to the next. I don't want to be a part of the ones that make that he just let go. So he told the church to go out to the next group. Go out quickly to the streets and to the alleys and the town and bring in the poor, 
Go out quickly. Bring in the cripple and the blind and the lame. Now what did the 22nd verse say? Sir, Sir the servant said, what you ought to have been done, but what? That's still room. Yes, Lord. And see, that's still some room in here. Is there room still in here? Is there room for your son in here? Is there room for your daughter in here? Is there room for your community in here? Is everything ready for them? Is everything, everything is ready for them? Why don't you tell them to come? Why don't you tell them you serve a God that forgives? Why don't you tell your grandchildren to come that everything is ready? I said, you got to, and see the message that the church has been conveying has been too hard. When the church begin, why would the, why would the one with the oxen, if you got to be able to tell them something that worth them leaving? You got to be able to share with that person, with the oxen, with something that's worth them leaving. If you don't have anything to share with that person that would make them be compelled to leave, why would he leave the oxen? The message that the church, we can't just tell somebody ignorantly anything and think they're just going to leave their career. You got to be able to compel the businessman and the poor man with the same evidence. That should be some type of evidence in our life that compels them to come, beloved. Yes, Lord. That there should be some type of evidence in our life where we're encouraging somebody in our faith to come. That there's greater. We serve somebody that's greater than your child. Somebody's greater than your marriage. Somebody's greater than your career. Somebody's greater than your investment. This more than just being disgruntled, but we serve somebody that's greater. Yes, and all these people had valid excuses. They did, beloved. Yes, Lord. But we got to be able to give them evidence, beloved. And I don't know what type of evidence that you have to be able to convince somebody that Jesus is still saving. I don't know what type of evidence that you have to convince somebody that Jesus is still delivering, that Jesus is still forgiving. See, you got to look at the evidence that you're, you're positioning to the mountain, the evidence that you're positioning to your child, the evidence that you're, pre you're presenting to your community. You got to look at the results, beloved. See, some of us are not showing a good picture of Jesus. Some of us are showing Jesus is not concerned about my job. Some of us are showing a Jesus that's not concerned about my marriage. Some of us are showing a Jesus that's not concerned about the church. But how many know like Simon? He said upon this rock, Simon, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I'm building my church and it starts with you. One by one I'm drawing you with my love. One by one I'm drawing you with my word. One by one, I pull you. I snatch you. I minister to you. I love you with an everlasting love. I love you with the unfailing love. One by one, why don't you tell the world? Why don't you tell the culture how much I love you? Why don't you tell the culture how much I forgave you? Why don't you tell the culture how I helped you? Why don't you tell the culture when I was there when your father and mother forsake you I was there to pick you up when nobody was there I protected you I watched out for you I counseled you I healed you when your body was sick I healed you and I breathed in you and I healed you and I said my word and watched over my word and I healed you with my word why don't you tell the culture that I'm still forgiven I'm a forgiving God. I'm a merciful God. I'm a kind God. I still love the same way I love from the beginning. I'm loving today. How many believe that he's still a loving God? How many believe he's a kind God? Tell the world. Tell the culture. I wish you'd find somebody. And say, tell the culture. He's still forgiven. Tell the culture. He's still forgiving. Tell your daughter. 
tell you son that God is still forgiving come on stand here. he's still forgiving he's still forgiving he's still forgiving don't get lost sharing these messages that everybody else is sharing I don't care how long they've been in the church don't mock it for Satan don't cause division in God's sins. If they want to know what's going on in the church, they need to be in the church. You got a message. Stay on the mountain. There's people that use their houses as caves. They use their jobs. They made all kinds of excuses that they're content with living in it. Unless you can say something to them that's more compelling for them to be able to leave the, the security of their house, to be able to leave the security of their job. The Lord said, he didn't say anything. He said, just go to the hedges and highways and compel them to come. There's some people that you won't get. You pray for them. You pray for them. But you do owe them that God is still forgiving. He's still forgiving. To you watching on social media, we thank God for you. God is still forgiving. There's still hope in this world. The end time revival is coming. The church is moving towards the the fullness of his power. Though we may think it's depleting because of this one falling, that one falling. God has a greater picture. He's the one that tear one down and bring one up. It's God's church. And it will prevail. God's people. God's kingdom. Anybody thank God that you're part of it? Anybody thank God that you're part of it? See, there's the difference with people that know you're part of it. They live like that. But then there's the people that don't feel like they're part of God's kingdom. And they live like that. They talk like that. But we have to be reminded the way that we talk. And remind ourselves I'm part of God's kingdom. I'm a part of the church of God. I can't talk like that. I can't do that. I'm here to show mercy. I'm here to be a peacemaker, not to cause confusion. I'm here to be a peacemaker. I'm here to be a blessing. You know, in prayer the other day, we told the Lord put in our heart to do good. To do good. And what, what was this? Go outside of your way to help somebody. Yeah. Do good and go outside of your way and help someone. See how y'all was scrambling? But the beauty, but look at the teaching. Look at this. Look at it. But you see how you were scrambling? Who did you look for? You looked for each other to get the answer. That's what we have. That's what the church does. God will give us a word. And instead of leaving out to ask somebody that wasn't in here. No, you ask the people that are in the house. Don't bring the culture in here for answers. Don't go out there for answers. The answer is in the mountain of God. It's where he teaches us what we need to know in the right paths. He said, I'll lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God is our leader. God is our deliverer. He's still forgiving. Beloved, we thank God for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. Father, help us, Lord, to convey this message to the culture. To be that end time church you call us to be. To share the message that you forgive. 
to share the message that without the shedding of blood, that there would be no remission of our sins. That it's by your grace that we're saved. It's by your grace. Lord, we thank you for my brother and sister that's watching, Lord. Cover them, minister to them, save them, and deliver them. In Jesus' name. Beloved, if you don't have a church home, why don't you join us? We're here. Link into our social media. Message us. Follow us. Contact us if you have any additional questions. We're here to do the work of the Lord. But we all have a message to convey to the world. That God still forgives. We love you. Come on and partner. You got to go to the mountain. The mountain is here. I see him. We thank God for you. Come on, give God praise for our social